Hello and welcome to part 10 of this Kerbal Space Program 2 video series running through the For Science update. So as you can see we've already placed our rocket in orbit around Juna. Uh, we did this in part 9 and this rocket is from my uh, Juna Monument Lander build guide. So if you want to build this then feel free to go and check that out. Um, and I have built this rocket specifically for this mission because this stage as you can see still has a little bit of fuel in it. So what we're doing is we're going to leave this stage in orbit and then we um, are going to use it as a potential refueling station because it's quite a fuel intensive manoeuvre we're about to do to get down on the surface so it's always good to have a little bit of backup fuel in, in orbit just in case we end up using more fuel than we uh, intend to but um, anyway yeah the actual lander is this section and it's a three part lander we've got the deorbit stage which is going to get us out of orbit and going down towards the target and we should only use a small amount of fuel in this stage to actually do the final part of the landing um, and the reason for that is the target is actually in a very difficult place to land so if we go onto the map and have a look around to see where it is you can see it's right there in the middle of this crater and the center there is kind of like a bit of a bump it's almost like a um, volcanic cone and it's very hilly it's very bumpy and there is only a very small area which is classed as the monument biome to actually land in to be able to get all the science we want and there's an even smaller area to actually uh, that's actually suitable for landing so if you aren't planning on landing directly on top of the target and you're not bothered about getting all of the science i would actually recommend landing somewhere around the edge of the crater because um, it's much smoother there and it's much easier to land but we are going to try and land directly on top of the target so anyway as you can see I have positioned the rocket in a polar orbit around Juna and the reason for that is when we're in a polar orbit the target is going to be moving underneath our orbit twice per rotation um, and that just means that we've always we've got at least two options although technically we only have the one because we definitely do not want to be landing on the night side because it's such a difficult place to land that we need to be able to actually see our landing site so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the flight view and then we are going to point the rocket at either normal or anti-normal and once it's there we're going to decouple the lander from the actual main um, bulk stage of the rocket And the reason we are decoupling at this particular orientation is because there is a risk if we were to do it at either you know retrograde or prograde that we might end up actually crashing into the bottom part of the rocket when we do our deorbit burn. So we will decouple. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just boost away a little bit with H on my keyboard using RCS just to get a bit of distance from the... Uh, well, like I said, this is essentially a refueling station, is this stage now. And then we're going to use the square bracket key to go back to it and point it in the opposite direction, which is anti-normal in this case. And then we are going to get rid of the um, shroud and actually expose the uh, docking port. So you can see when things are clipped together as they are, it can be a little bit janky, but that managed to come away fairly smoothly and we haven't broken anything. And as you can see, we have a docking port on here. We also have an antenna and a probe core as well, just so that this is controllable, because we will need to be able to point this at the uh, command module if we need to do a docking manoeuvre. But anyway, now that is set, what we can do is we can go back to our main rocket and we can judge where we are going to land. So. Like I said, the target is going to be coming underneath our orbit somewhere around here. So we are not going to need to warp forward so that it will rotate. However, because we're in orbit, we can only get to 100 times warp. And it's very slow if we do it like that. So the way we're going to actually do this warp is if we go to the um, tracking station. Uh, now, if we go to the tracking station from the, straight from the ship you will be able to see that the warp is exactly the same because we're still controlling that ship. So what we need to do is we actually need to go to the Kerbal Space Center first. And then once we're there, we'll go into the tracking station from the KSC. And now you can see we have the full warp available to us. So we will find Juna and focus on that. And then we're going to line up our orbit line and get the uh, target roughly central on the planet. And then we're just going to carefully warp forwards until it's a little way ahead of our actual orbit line. So we'll do a careful warp. 
And if you do go too far and it goes beyond your orbit, then just carry on warping until it comes back around because Juno does rotate, so it's quite easy to actually get the uh, signal back to where we want it to be. But now it's getting close, we're going to cut the warp. And now we're going to go back to our ship and there are a couple of ships here now and the one that we want will actually show us um, well if we manage to find it wherever it is I mean there are two ways to do it you can either click on it and it would come up with a crew option there to show that it's the one that we want but instead what we'll do is we'll go to Juna we will click on the Juna monument lander and as you can see now we have the crew right there so we know this is the correct ship we want so yeah, now we're back at the ship, what we're going to do is we're going to go back onto the map. And there are a couple of ways you can get down. You could, because Duna has an atmosphere, you could just lower your periapsis and use the atmospheric drag to get down. Uh, that is technically more efficient, however, it's also considerably less accurate. Um, it's quite difficult to judge where you're going to come in using the atmospheric drag. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create, create a maneuver on the orbit. And then we are going to do a retrograde burn until we basically nullify our horizontal speed. And we're going straight down into the atmosphere, and that will actually uh, it'll nullify or negate the actual like drag issue. Um, we might actually be a little early, so we might need to do another couple of orbits before this. But we'll get the um, maneuver node roughly in the position where we expect the signal to be, and then we're going to warp towards the maneuver. You can see we're actually coming down almost directly on top of the target, which isn't too bad actually. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend actually aiming directly for the target itself. What we want to do is we want to actually be aiming somewhere about halfway between the target marker and the right hand edge of the crate because as we're doing our maneuvers, it will be moving across. So, what we'll do is we'll use the maneuver node and we'll use the uh, anti normal arrow just to it to roughly halfway between the edge of the crater and the actual target as I say and we do need to point at the maneuver as well before we get there because we only have nine seconds left at the minute and as I say this is a much more challenging way to get down um, but generally as I said I find it to be much more accurate so now we're at zero we'll go to full throttle and do our deorbit maneuver And now we are heading straight down towards the target. So this is where it can get a little bit iffy. We are going to quick save just in case we need to do this again. Because as I say, it's quite a difficult maneuver. It's taken me a lot of practices to actually get the maneuver down. And um, yeah, I'd recommend quick saving just in case something does go wrong and you need to try it again. But now we are in low Juno orbit. We are going to hit the uh, research button and get some more science. And then we're going to point the rocket retrograde. And we're also going to retract the solar panel so we don't lose them due to the atmospheric drag. And finally, we will extend our landing legs and ladders as well. Because in the build video, if you've seen it, I have actually set up the ladders in the same group as the landing legs. So they automatically um, deploy and we don't actually have to you know, mess around trying to deploy them individually. So yeah, now we are descending. We can warp down into Juna's atmosphere. Now we're in the atmosphere, we can do more science, and because we have the atmospheric survey on, we will get even more science for this as well. So now it can be uh, quite challenging, as I say, and the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to deploy our parachutes on the side here, which are specifically aimed at getting us, well, slowing us down before we land. And I have actually put these in an action group, so I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard to deploy the parachutes. And uh, if you haven't seen the build video, what I've done is I've set these parachutes up so that if we press 2 on the keyboard, it will deploy them. Then when we get low enough, we are going to want to slow ourselves down to a hover and then cut the parachutes because they will get in the way of our manoeuvres. And uh, I've put action group 3 as cut and then action group 4 is repack because 
we want to repack them immediately afterwards just in case something does go wrong and we need to use them again. So yeah, these parachutes are set to deploy at 5,000 metres and the default for uh, main parachutes is actually 1,000 metres. However, that isn't anywhere near high enough to actually get the maximum amount of effect that we want. So as I say, I'll deploy, set them to deploy at 5,000. So once we hit that, we will uh, start to slow down and these should slow us down to around about 35-ish meters per second. And you can see the target is right there. So I'm gonna press F4 to get rid of the marker and you can see that's where we want to be landing. And as I say, there's only a very small area around the target in which is classed as the monument biome and then there's an even smaller area which i think is on the other side of the target which is actually suitable for landing so what we'll do is we are going to rotate the ship so that the ladders are pointed in the direction of the monument the reason for that is when we press w we will then be pitching towards the monument s will pitch us away and uh, a and d will pitch us left and right respectively so anyway, now we are starting to get down to about a thousand meters above the surface. Once we hit a thousand, we're actually going to increase the throttle and then cut the drogue parachute or cut the parachutes to slow ourselves down to a hover. So now we're there, we'll cut the chutes and repack, and we're going to slow our descent down. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to point the rocket up on the nav ball because then when we do our pitch maneuvers we're not going to constantly be trying to nullify the horizontal speed so we'll reorient the ship so we're definitely pointing in the right direction and now we will use w to pitch in the direction of the actual monument and this will start giving us some horizontal velocity And as I said, this is a very fuel intensive manoeuvre, which is why I have set this um, rocket up in the way I have. And unfortunately, at the moment, it's not actually giving us our delta V uh, count on the staging stack. So we're going to need to keep an eye on the actual fuel. But as, once that has actually uh, run out, we will be ditching this stage anyway, because as, as you can see, the landing legs are on the next stage up. So I'm just going to tidy up the staging stack and we're going to manage our speed so that we are not ascending but we need to stay at a reasonably decent height above the surface because if we do get too low then it makes the actual landing itself very difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim to try and keep the retrograde marker on the nav ball pointed between 45 degrees and the edge of the nav ball and that means we're still descending ever so slightly but we're also moving uh, horizontally as well. So if you're coming in to the side, then just do a little adjustment either to the right or left, whichever you need to do. Um, and with this maneuver, small adjustments are key. We don't want to be doing big adjustments because then it's very difficult to actually uh, you know, negate those later on in the actual maneuver. So we're gonna keep steadily moving towards it. And it looks like we might actually be coming on the correct side. So we'll ditch that stage. The Poodle engine isn't quite as powerful as the skipper, so we need to increase the throttle to actually make sure that we don't descend too fast. And as I was saying, it looks like we're actually coming in on the correct side, so we're going to actually be landing right there, because that's the only real, really suitable area to land. So, as I say, we'll just keep steadily pitching or moving horizontally towards the target, trying not to ascend too far. And as I say, this isn't the easiest of manoeuvres. Um, it can take quite a lot of practice. There have been occasions when I've been uh, preparing for this video to, that I've actually done like multiple um, attempts at landing. Uh, and it can get quite frustrating. Uh, but anyway, we seem to be coming in a little bit to the left. So I'm going to yaw to the right slightly to change our direction a little bit. We're also going to rotate the ship so we're still pointed towards the target. And we are starting to come in a bit low. I'm going to increase the throttle and try and increase our altitude ever so slightly. And this is, as I say, is quite a fuel intensive uh, manoeuvre, so we need to keep an eye on our um, fuel and make sure that we're not going to run out. I'll, although the way this rocket is designed, 
we should actually have plenty of fuel in this to do what we need to do. So we're starting to descend again. And the reason we are staying relatively high is when we get close enough, we're actually going to want to point retrograde um, and then stop our horizontal travel and actually descend to the surface. And you want to make sure that you are not going below one meter per second velocity because when that happens it will reset the uh, nav wheel and that can actually mess everything up when it comes to the final bit of the landing. So as I say we're starting to get close to the target and we need to be landing right there. So now we are here we're going to point the ship retrograde and try and nullify our horizontal speed. did that a tad early so I'm going to point up again and I'm just going to pitch back towards where we actually want to land so we're still traveling horizontally ever so slightly you can see now we've dropped below one meter per second uh, the nav ball has actually reset itself so we'll make sure we are still pointed up we're starting to get quite low now and we want to make sure that we are definitely not traveling um, horizontally when we land because it's very easy to fall over so we are using a lot more fuel than i intended on this landing but as i say that is why we have the extra stage in space to uh, make sure that we actually are going to well be able to refuel when we go back so i'm going to raise up ever so slightly because what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cut the throttle so we start going down point at retrograde and then increase the throttle so that we are below five meters per second now we should be able to get a relatively soft landing so amazingly that was the first attempt at this landing uh, i was expecting to have to do multiple attempts and try and edit the video but amazingly i managed to get down first time but as i say that is because i've practiced this landing technique quite a lot so as i say practice makes perfect um we did use a lot more fuel than i intended but hopefully we'll have enough to get up into orbit and be able to rendezvous and dock and then uh, refuel but anyway yeah now we are at the duna monument we can uh, have a look and see what it's all about so it's quite an interesting little sculpture is this isn't it um yeah, is it just me, or does that look a little bit like David Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean? I mean, I wouldn't really know, given that I've not been a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean since the first one, because, well, the first one was a great film, but the rest of them just became the Johnny Depp show, in my opinion. But anyway, enough of that. Um, I digress. So what we're going to do is we are going to quick save to make sure that we don't have to do all that again. Then we're going to hit the science button to get our first bit of science from the monument. And now we need to EVA and actually get a surface sample. So I'm going to EVA Neilden for this, I think. And just before I do drop, I'll just point out that you can see just how difficult this area is to land. So if we were to have landed like a few feet in this direction, we'd have been on a slope and we'd have probably fallen over. If we'd have landed there, we'd have definitely fallen over. Um, so this is literally the only flat area in front of the monument. It's not an easy place to land. But anyway, now we will do our science. So we'll drop to the surface. We will right click and grab a surface survey. And then once that's done, all we need to do is plant a flag. So that's all of the science for the actual monument biome, however, we can get a little bit more science here. So if we run a little way away from the monument, uh, you'll see that as soon as we get over this ridge, we will actually end up in the Midlands. And now we are here, we can do even more science, and that just illustrates how small the actual monument biome is. It's literally that little area there, and as I say, this is pretty much the only suitable landing spot. So, which is why this landing can be quite difficult. So, we've done our surface survey, we'll do a crew observation. 
And if we felt daring, we could even move the lander across into the Midlands and do more science. But I don't feel like doing that at the moment. Um, that was a very successful landing for me, and I don't want to mess it up by trying to move the lander. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much everything we need to do when it comes to landing on Juna. Um, the only th other thing we'll definitely need to do before we do anything really is reboard. In fact, I'm going to square bracket to get onto the ship, and I'm going to make sure that the actual solar panels are open because we do not want to be running out of electricity before we need to launch but yeah like i say that's pretty much everything there is for this video it was um, much quicker and much more successful than i actually expected so hopefully you um, got an idea of how to do it as i say i've done that landing technique a lot it's not very easy but once you've practiced it then you'll have it down and once you've got that uh, technique down it's pretty easy to then land pretty much anywhere um, in the Kerbal solar system so yeah as I say um, this is all for this particular video in the next one we will be launching back from the surface and uh, rendezvousing with the uh, fuel station in space and doing a refueling maneuver and then from there we will get back to Kerbin so I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you did, then please feel free to like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.